Hi, my name is Jack. Today I'll talk to you about how we can tackle cardinality with Cribble. Now, what is cardinality? Cardinality basically is uh, based on unique labels for a given metric. So for example, you will have a machine which will have CPUs, memories, hard disks. Each of these CPU, memory, hard disks generates metrics that you observe to control the behavior of the system. So in, in, in the real world, it could be anywhere from, you know, you might have a hyper-threaded machine, you could have a CPU count of 1 to 16, or it could be a server response or app response KPIs. Now, as you can see, as your system grows, the volume grows, and it can go from anywhere from hundreds to thousands to millions, right? Even especially these days with cloud and also on-prem, you have virtual machines to containers. Now, the challenge of all this is that as the number of uh, metric gro metric grows the, and each label grows the cost of ownership grows how it's because you're using an observability platform to monitor your systems and you want to see how it's behaving thus as you're observing all the key metrics for your system because you want to know before the system hits a bottle a bottleneck there's a cost to it and this is where cripple can help you get better value from your observability platform and I'll show that to you in a sample next demo. Now, in this example here, I've got a set of machines routing their memory and CPU to my Grafana powered system using Prometheus backend. And at the same time, I'm also sending a copy of them through Cribble that ends up in Grafana too, but processed via Cribble so that you can see the difference with pre-Cribble and post-Cribble and see how the savings comes into place. So the first thing we do here is that we come into Cribble. There's a pipeline and each pipeline in this example is Linux cardinality metrics. We have functions. Functions are basically codes that allow you to execute an event. So the event will be processed. And events are basically whatever you see on the right hand side here, which is this example, a sample Linux metrics events. Now, these functions can be for anything. I'm going to be using the aggregation functions, right? Within the aggregation functions, we have a way of doing aggregations. Now, first example here we're going to do is the spatial uh, aggregations, right? Spatial aggregations basically allow you to aggregate all data points for a group of resources over a specified period, right? So in this example here, right, we have got aggregations, spatial aggregations by dimensions, right? And what we're doing is we are looking at, uh, uh, you know, node CPU percent for for my machines, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna summarize the CPU and memory swap utilization, right? And remember I said spatial is over a specified period of time. The time window here, because uh, my, 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 my Linux system is sending the data over every 10 seconds, right? But you can modify this according to your network, to your environment, to your criticality. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an aggregation, right? We're gonna sum the metrics from the node CPU percent, right? Where the mode is not idle. Why? Because we are looking to see how busy a server is, and if idle isn't excluded, the metric would be 100%, which is not a useful metric. We are also looking for distinct count, right? Because we're looking at distinct number of CPU cores called CPU count, then, then, then we're going to do some math, right? Summing the node, as you can see here, for CPU percent over CPU count to a certain fix and only have two significant digits using the fix, we are making sure this value comes back as a numeric value and not a string. This is our spatial aggregation, right? And across dimension, mode, and CPU. Now let's see how the other set of aggregation is, which is temporal. Temporal aggregation basically means tracking trends over a period of time and identifying fluctuations, right? So basically we are doing exactly as we did as the spatial aggregations, but the main difference here is that we are aggregating 10 second data points to 20 seconds for CPU seconds, right? And we're excluding again where mode is, uh, you know, idle because that will be not exactly the most accurate way of uh, finding the information. So here, as you can see, time window is set to 20 seconds and the aggregates are similar to above where, you know, we're doing a sum, right, of all the node CPU seconds of total where the mode is not idle as node CPU seconds underscore all total, right? And then we also have the distinct count, CPU as CPU count. We can also do this via sum, via average, via min max. Now, 
Why we're doing it, these two, uh, why we're complementing each other is because by having both spatial and temporal aggregations, we're being smarter by collecting and aggregating the metrics, but at the same time, we're making sure we do not lose visibility into the performance of my system so that I know before a bottleneck hits, right? So this is how we talk about being smarter with your data, shaping your data with Cribble. Now, what we're also doing is after that, we're removing, right? We're using another function, which is called drop, right? We can drop events that were aggregated and already summarized by either of these aggregations above. And we've set the filter to drop anything that's called the uh, CPU seconds and mode is uh, not now, right? So that means why we're we doing it this way? We want to remove duplicates. That's why we are doing uh, cleaning up of the metrics to ensure these uh, aggregates are only sent via the aggregation that is required, right? And we can see we are using eval functions to make sure, you know, we can remove those fields that have uh, got duplicates because we've already done the aggregation. So we are cleaning up and the eval fields, as you can see, this is uh, removing those fields and based on different conditions, one was for node CPU seconds and one for node CPU percent, right? We are removing any fields that we believe are duplicates. Now, based on these conditions and base functions, Here's an example on the right hand side, how the raw logs look like and post-processing, this is what it looks like. Now, we can even filter down to, you know, say for example, uh, node CPU seconds all total and just see, just focus on that area. And we can see because we set it up over 20 seconds for temporal aggregations, right? And as you can see the dot 20 count here and the next point starts as dot 40, right? And we can see what's the, di when we go into the diagnostics to see how much we have reduced, it's close to 19%. This is the power of Cribble where we are actually helping you aggregate the metrics, but we are increasing the fields by at least 4% in this example. But we are also being smart because we are making the best out of both spatial and temporal aggregations. Now, let's take a look at them in Grafana and how it looks like. Here it looks like pre-processing in Grafana on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side is post-processing via Cribble. So if you look into it and if you scroll down here to see you know which particular field that we worked on we can see node cpu percent if you filter down just for that prior to cribble it was like 480 the amount of active series metrics post cribble is 51 that's a significant amount of reduction that's the power of cribble how we can help you control your cardinality issues thank you and have a nice day